said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now my feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, a city built and bound firmly together. The people of the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For there the thrones for judgment were set up, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem for Dallas, for Kabul, for Shanghai, for Port-au-Prince, for Boston. Pray for the peace of Zion. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For the sake of my relatives and my friends, I will say, Shalom be within you. Please be seated. We pray for the city in this next song. Let me speak over it. You're the God of this city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. But there is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city.
You're the king of this people. You're the lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. Everyone, the bigger is no one like. Beautiful. 
You make beautiful things out of the dust. You make beautiful things. You make beautiful things out of us. say welcome to the table. Let's welcome each other in the name of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everything really is. does make beautiful things and I agree with John you just look around this space at the faces who are gathered here and to the space itself and as we enter into this prayer time I just want to give thanks to our worship team who came down yesterday and spent the morning um, transforming our space into Advent and of course the O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, as you walked in. Uh, Rebecca, I just don't even know how you even think of these things and can make these things, but they, it's just marvelous, just marvelous. So thank you all for being a part of that and worship chair. Really appreciate you being here and helping even with your foot. And how are you doing as we enter into this prayer time? A lot better. Every day better. Well, we have to make sure we thank Charles and his whole Oh, of course, family. the they whole Yamamoto family. Yes. That's right. That's exactly right. Had a good team down here. Um, I do want to lift up in prayer today a couple of prayer concerns. Colin isn't here today. He called me squeaky voiced last night, and he's been sick the whole holiday and has a a fever, and he decided he didn't want to share that with you all, and I, I gave uh, approval to that, but we do miss him, and we ask for God's healing power on Colin and others who are suffering from the highs and the lows of the temperatures and how it, how it gets to them. We also had two funerals here this week that were really wonderful celebrations for beloved uh, one beloved church member and one beloved uh, family connected with the church. And we know, um, just a reminder that this season is so hard for families, uh, especially after a loss. And so if you would just hold all families, people you know, maybe even your own family, who will be celebrating this year without a beloved member with them. But also celebrate that they're getting to celebrate Christmas in heaven this year. I mean, how exciting would that be? Um, uh, a joy and a celebration. There. 
Other names you can see on this list, continued prayers for some of our beloved <coughs> members and those outside the church. Um, and are there any other prayer concerns or joys that you want to share today with your church family here? Then I invite us, today is the first Sunday of Advent, and I'll explain that a little bit more in my sermon time. But today is um, the Sunday that we focus on hope. And I would like to invite us into this prayer time to really consider the things for which we hope. The things that are not yet, but we have this desire, this vision of what they might be and what they could be and with God's help what they will be. So as we enter into this prayer time, and, and just as I said those words to you and the things for which you might hope, what, what kind of, what words came to your mind that you feel like you could share? I know a lot of these are our own personal words, but what else? Is there something that you feel like you want all of us to hope? Peace, peace, peace. Yeah. We think of those places in the world, and John did lift up the city of Kabul, one city among many that need to know peace. And we pray for God's intervention there. What else? It could be simply, you know, getting through the rest of the year and getting all your tests and exams done. You can hope for that, right? Okay, so we'll pray for our students that way. Health and healing for all of those. That's good. Need it. Health and healing for all those who need it. Amen to that. And God's love just known throughout the world. So many people still don't know. That's right. So the love of God through Jesus Christ our Lord throughout the world. That's really what Jesus was trying to do. You know, his life was given to sharing. God created you. God loves you. I would, I would hope that people would keep in mind the reason for the season, as I say. Yes. With all our hustle and bustle and focusing on grabbing TV. You know, that is one of those things. And, uh, <laughs> There was a time that I enjoyed doing Black Friday shopping, but it's just gotten to that point that it kind of makes me sick. You're right. I mean, uh, you're you're blinded to all but that TV or whatever it is that we run and, and fight the crowds and fight each other for. So yeah, I, I would hope that people really remember the reason for this season. Great. Thank you, Jesus. Then let's take these prayers and let's wrap them up in this time of prayer and give them to our God as a gift of faith mm -hmm. that the Lord will bring about hope to us. Almighty and our loving God, we do give you thanks this day for the knowledge that hope is alive and well and that you are continuing throughout time to weave in to those darkest places the light of hope in lives that need to see it most. You've heard us share aloud those places in our own contemporary situations, and we know that you have heard the pleas of your people throughout the ages. The psalmist sang about it, and Isaiah, Isaiah cried out for it. And we know in hindsight, as we look back, that you are a deliverer of possibilities. 
that good can indeed conquer all evils and struggles with which we may be engaged and with which our world is engaged. So, Lord, this day may we rest in this prayer time and hope, hope that healing is speedy and that strength and power returns to those in our family and in our friendships who need your healing touch. Hope that comfort is available to those who are grieving and walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Hope that our world will know peace. We pray all of these things in the name of the one for whom we wait and watch and wonder your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. I'd like to invite the Martinez Byrne family to come forward at this time and share our Advent lighting. Today is the beginning of Advent, the preparation time for celebrating Christ's birth. We are here because God's promises to our ancestors came true when Jesus was born. God's promises kept each Sunday when we worship because Christ is in our midst. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of, of God into the world, which is our hope. Because of Christ, we, are, we not only have hope, but we believe that good is stronger than evil. Thank you, thank you. I also forgot to celebrate, John, that your mom and dad are here. And we welcome you to the service. And aren't you just proud of your son? Didn't he just rock and roll and, and praise the Lord with his very being? So we're so glad that, that you all are here to give witness to that. Well, Happy New Year, y'all. Happy New Year. Uh, no, I haven't gotten into the eggnog a little early. I haven't, I haven't done that, and I'm still not woozy on tryptophan from all that turkey I ate. Um, I, I, I know that we have 24 days to finish our shopping, and that there's still another week after that before 2014 dawns. Can you believe it? God. But today is really the first day of the new year on the Christian calendar. Did you know that? Advent is the starts the first of the year in the Christian calendar. And so today, December 1st, is the day. Happy New Year, y'all. Happy New Year. We who live in the meantime period, that time before the the, uh, after the first coming of Christ and the next coming of God into our world, 
Uh, we were going, are going to take this season of Advent, which means preparing for the coming of Emmanuel. Advent is Latin for to come, to, to come into the world. Um, we take this time to, to consider what it is we need to do to be ready for Jesus entrance into our world. That's what the season of Advent is. It's a season of preparation. And, and so we wait and we wonder and we're invited to wake up um, to the coming of Emmanuel. You heard it in the scripture this morning and so we begin this time looking with eyes filled with hope. Um, for Jesus' advent in our world. Will you join with me now in a prayer of preparation? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts gathered in this room this day be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Have you ever had an occasion where you just looked at your life or looked at what was going on around you and you said, oh, this is a hopeless situation. Have you ever um, been working with someone and, or, or maybe <laughs> it's someone in your own family and you've been struggling and you say, oh, he's hopeless, she's hopeless. Have you ever had those moments? A, a number of years ago, in a mental institution outside Boston, there was a young girl named Little Annie who was placed in a locked room in a wing of the hospital that was set aside for what they called the hopelessly insane. Little Annie, as a child, had known abuse and truly reacted to the world as a feral animal would. On occasion, she would violently attack people who came into her room, and at other times she would just ignore that they were even there. According to the experts at the time, Annie was a hopeless case, doomed to live until the day she died behind those locked doors. Hopeless. Even saying the word uh, with my lips and and feeling it with, I'm sure, all of our hope, our hearts, hopeless hangs heavy. Our text from Isaiah today comes to us from a time of seeming hopelessness. Powerful Assyria was gobbling up the nations all around it and was on its way to visit Israel. The nation of Israel itself was having political infighting and there was corruption in the government that King David had built, so much so that it was weakening their position from the possible attack that would be coming. And not only that, the folks had left the gods, had left God's word and were uh, cavorting with other religious traditions of nations who were also fighting against Assyria. And so they were having a focus on how can we work together, which is not a bad thing, but it was giving up a lot of the values and the teachings of God in order to work together um, and not paying attention as much to the needs of the people that God had called them to care for. There was starvation in the streets of Jerusalem and the people were lost. It was a time of hopelessness in Israel and Isaiah talked about it in chapter one when he said this, that he said in verses two and three, he says, just a minute, let me find it in my notes. I've lost it. Here, here we go. I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, the donkey its master's crib, but Israel doesn't know me. My people do not understand me. 
And then chapter 1, verse 5, Isaiah said, The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. Isaiah is inviting us to see from God's eye view downward, witnessing only head-shaking, heart-breaking behavior from the creatures that he crafted to know, love, and to live in peace on this earth. And Isaiah was reflecting his own perception that God must look at us and feel hopeless. We've all been there. We've all had those feelings of hopelessness, and maybe we have done a lot of that today as we look around our world, muttering and grumbling to one another about our own national situation. And I know I've heard it a lot when it comes to the transition in our health care system. Uh, a hopeless mess is what I hear people say. Even that is a kind word about that. And we can't help but place ourselves in the situations of our brothers and sisters who are living in the Philippines this week or in the Midwest of our own nation as they may not have homes to come home to for the holidays and for them their future may feel hopeless to them. Or maybe we, each one of us here, are bringing to this sacred time our own life situation which has blinded us to possibilities and may have caused us to utter those famous words of Yogi Berra, the future ain't what it used to be. I bet if I ask for a show of hands right now, I'm not going to, but I bet if I did, uh, about how many of us in this room have ever known a time of hopelessness, I'd be waving back at a lot of my compatriots. We understand Isaiah and the people of his time and how they may have felt hopeless, stuck in the muck of despair and doom. And yet, and with God, that's, there's always that and yet. In the very next breath, God speaks through Isaiah the vision that can only be called a gift of hope, O oh, house of Jacob, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. Isaiah invites after proclaiming a world, a future, in which swords will be beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, a transformation from a life of hopeless destruction to a life of abundance and harvest. Visions of hope that Isaiah gives to his people, a gift of God to be unwrapped slowly with deliberate delight. Vision is the key word here. Isaiah was given a vision. The old saying, you see what you look for, is so true when we think about vision that we have for our future as we search for signs of hope. The author Thornton Wilder once said, hope is the projection of the imagination, but so is despair. Despair readily foresees all ills. Hope <coughs> arouses the mind to explore every possibility to combat those ills. In response to hope, the imagination is aroused to picture every possible issue, to try every door, to fit together even the most heterogeneous pieces in the puzzle. After the solution is, <coughs> has been found, it's difficult to recall the steps taken. So many of our decisions are made just below the conscious level, for that's where hope does its best work. We live in a time where our people are seeing, foreseeing, the future as hopeless. How many of you have read the books or seen the movies uh, around the Hunger Games? Anybody? A couple? The Hunger Games uh, are, uh, is a genre that's coming out that is about dystopia, not utopia 
dystopia, the destruction of the world or the devolution, devolution of the world. Uh, and we get a lot of those when we see the hopelessness of the future, um, that it will devolve into these tribes, uh, children killing children. Uh, and yet, and yet, even in the midst of these stories, we see these glimmers of light that are glimmers of hope. And wouldn't it be wonderful to have Isaiah's vision, perhaps that we don't have to devolve that far in order to achieve the world that God has given us and to reclaim it again. The Advent season invites us to participate in that reclamation project, to see afresh, to wake up, and to see afresh the possibilities that peace can and will be a part of our everyday life. That men, women, and children alike can follow the light of Jesus Christ and experience hope in the midst of hopelessness. We who are living in the meantime, before the first and the next coming of Christ, we are given this opportunity to see the possibilities of hope. And the truth is, we've already seen it. We've already been witness. Um, if you think about it, y'all, 150 years ago, if we had been gathering 150 years ago, we would have seen another hopeless time. 150 years ago, human slavery was still an accepted practice and even supported by churches in congregations. The battle to rid the land of the free of the, the scourge, scourge of slavery began long before the Civil War. It seemed at the time just this long and, and hopeless battle. And during one particular period, an especially dark cloud hung over an entire the entire movement to free slaves. Uh, Frederick Douglass, great speaker, abolitionist himself, had called together a meeting, and it was a crowded room of folks. And graphically, he depicted the terrible condition of America's African-American population. Everything seemed to be against his people. One political party had gone down on its knees to slavery, meaning that they said, oh, we're keeping it. Another political, the other political party proposed not to abolish it anywhere, but just to restrict it. No new states can be slave states. You remember that from your American history? The Supreme Court at the time had given judgment to support the institution of slavery. An unknown historian tells us that as Douglas went on with his despairing words, a great horror seemed to descend upon the crowd. The orator even uttered a cry that it may be time to shed blood in this nation. There was no other relief he saw for Americans, America's African descended population. But just at that moment, when the cloud was hanging its heaviest, an old black woman stood up in the front row. Her name was Sojourner Truth. She had given herself that name as one who saw that she journeyed in the truth of God's love for all God's people. Every eye was on her as Frederick Douglass quit speaking and there was a hush in the room. Reaching out her long bony finger, she cried out to Frederick Douglass, Frederick? Is God dead? And at that moment, the cloud began to break, and faith and hope return. For God is not dead. God is alive and well and working and living in this world, and that's the hope upon which our hearts can rest. And you know how we can know that to be true? Because 150 years later, praise the Lord. I mean, it is history now. 
to which we refer. So whenever the people of God Remember to look through eyes of hope, to see the possibilities, to see how God wants us to live and be in, and live in what is possible and what is good, <laughs> that it can and will come to pass if God is in it. Advent is this season to remember the hope Jesus brought into the world. And not only do we see it in in you know, in a global sense, in a national sense, but we also see it in lives, in people's lives that are changed. Remember little Annie? Um, the hopeless case, she was called. There was an elderly nurse in that hospital, nearing retirement, who believed that there was hope for all God's children. So she started taking Annie her lunch and, and then would sit outside the locked door and eat her own lunch as she talked back and forth uh, between the locked doors. At first, little Annie gave no indication that she even knew the nurse was there and hardly touched her food at all. One day, the elderly nurse brought some brownies that she had just baked to the door and she left them. Annie gave no hint that she knew they were there, but the next day when the nurse came back, the brownies were all gone. From that time on, the nurse would bring Annie brownies every single day. Soon after, the doctors at the institution saw a change in Annie, and, and after a period of time, they decided she was able to leave the locked ward and go to another wing that had more freedom. There, the nurse got a chance to see and talk with Annie face to face, day after day, with no fear of violence. Brownies kept coming every day, or every <coughs> Thursday, and their trust developed, and a love developed, based on brownies, which I think is a pretty good thing to be based on, as a matter of fact. Finally, the day came when the hopeless case was told she could go home. <coughs> but Annie didn't wish to leave. She chose to stay and to help others that were thought to be hopeless cases too. She it was who taught and nurtured Helen Keller. For little Annie's name was one we've all come to know as Ann Sullivan, who helped the little <coughs> girl see a world filled with hope. Christians, each one of us here has the opportunity to be a sign of hope, not only in this Advent season, but each and every day of our lives. Thanks be to God for this Advent gift given to each one of us. Will you pray with me? Oh Lord, you know where it is that we feel life is hopeless and, and you know what situations that we sometimes can get stuck in the muck of doom and gloom. But Lord, help us to wake up and to see the possibilities of hope made real through Jesus Christ, who, whose very life, death, and resurrection was that for us. Help us to be aware. In Jesus' name, amen. Mark, if you come join me at the table and... And just a reminder, as I said, this table is the sign of hope from despair. This cross, empty, is the sign of God's miraculous intervention into the darkness and the light of the world, the light of hope, shines brightly. It, Felt like a hopeless night that night Jesus gathered with his disciples for the last time. But when Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body 
given for you. Take and eat and remember me. And then likewise with the cup, held it up and said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you. As often as you drink this, do so and remember me until I come again. He set a table of hope for us. Let us get back. Dear Heavenly Father, we're truly thankful today. We know that um, you brought all your children here to this earth, not for us to feel hopeless, but because you had such an exciting, wonderful life for us. And you want us to have that hope. And we get to come to this table today knowing that you gave us that hope through your son, Jesus Christ. As we taste this bread and this cup, knowing as it nurtures our body that this is your son, this is remembrance of him, the hope of all the yet to come. And we thank you, Lord, for loving us that much that you gave us this amazing yes. gift. These things we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. All who will believe in Jesus Christ, who believe and have faith in that hope that Christ brings, all who are seeking that hope that Christ brings, this table has been set for you. Come and share in the gift of God. you take it with you 
from this place into whatever life has in store for you. I hope you don't have hopeless cases in your life that you have to wrestle with in the week ahead. But if you do, Christ has come. Christ is coming again. Christ is yours this day. Hallelujah for that. Um, as we look ahead to the week we have ahead, there are lots of announcements to lift up. First of all, uh, First Sunday of Advent means it's Advent Workshop in our Great Hall following the sanctuary service. This is a family uh, craft, Christmas craft time, although you don't have to have kids to be a kid yourself and go and make some beautiful um, Christmas decorations for your own home. And so that's, a, and there's lunch provided. I don't know what we're eating, but it'll be good. Yeah. So hamburgers mm -hmm. oh there you go it'll be good so all are welcome to come and participate in the advent workshop today uh tomorrow night is our official board meeting where we will be electing hopefully our new slate of officers for 2014 and hearing preliminary numbers for our budget and again i'm grateful thankful for all of you who came last sunday and shared in our thanks for giving Sunday, Consecration Sunday, and what a great lunch that was, too. Pizza Lounge is the place for the pub on Tuesday night. And then just a reminder for your journeying, and especially Van, just a reminder, those of you who, well, you don't have to worry, Dave, but next week is the Dallas Marathon, so that means roads will be closed in many places around this church. The best way to come in always is from the I-30 at Carroll Peak and Haskell uh, entrance. The, they, never, they never block off Peak, so you can come down that way from Peak. So that's just a reminder to all of you for that. And upcoming events, we have a lot of things happening in the life of the church. If you would like to have a memorial poinsettia, um, ordered for your family in the coming weeks uh, in honor or in memory of someone, please fill this out and put it um, on this table somewhere and we'll pick it up later. And just a reminder, immediately following this, this service is our Sunday School uh, discussion group table talk and all are invited to attend I'm guessing you're in the third chapter. We're in Luke 3. We the, have a prophet in the wilderness crying out. We have uh, Jesus genealogy. I promise I'll do the names and pretend like I know they're, how they're pronounced. Oh, that's it's great. A, chapter 3 is a fun chapter, yeah. Chapter 3. And how appropriate. Prepare you the way of the Lord on this first Sunday of Advent. That was great timing, John Ogren. <laughs> wow, that's how that works. Um, and uh, as always, for those of you, as we say, out in YouTube land, we are so glad you have joined us for worship and invite you to come anytime right here and be a part of us at 930 on Sunday mornings and know that our prayers are with you and we pray for God's blessing of hope upon you as well as all of us here in this place. I think that's it. Um, if there's any of you who would like to have special prayer time, I'll, I can hang back over there a little bit if you have some special prayers you need me to pray for you. Always know that, that your pastors are here for you. Let us rise and go forth then with the hope of Jesus Christ in our hearts and in our lives. Thanks be to God. And Happy New Year. Amen. <laughs>